Okay, here's the video on inverse variation. I'm going to try to give you uh, a, a very basic idea of what's going on, as this is part of our rational equations and rational expressions unit. Uh, you can see here in pink, y equals k over x is the model that we're going to use for rational, um, for, sorry, for inverse variation in our rational expressions unit. Um, y and x just represent two different variables that are, when we say inversely related, you're thinking in terms of as y increases, x would decrease. So a great example of inverse um, variation would be something like exercise and uh, someone's um, body weight. So maybe the more you exercise, the lower their body weight goes because they're burning calories. That's an okay one. Now that doesn't always work, I know. Uh, another one would be the amount of gas in a, in a gas tank of a car and the amount of time driving that car. As the gas decreases, that must mean that you're driving the car longer and longer and longer. So the amount of gas goes down because the amount of time you're driving the car goes up. Those two things are, again, inversely related. As Y would decrease, X would increase or as X would increase, Y would decrease. Then we've got this guy um, in the numerator called K. That's the constant of variation. And all it is, and I don't mean to make it more complicated than it should be, it's the value that all these scenarios with the gas tank or with the exercise, all those scenarios that we come up with, they all have the same value in common. That's what means with constant, they're the same. So when we're going through this, you would use the same constant for the entire scenario. So a real basic one to start with would be this number, number two right here. It says Y varies inversely with X. All right, so we're going to use this model right here. And it says if Y is equal to 40 when X is equal to 16, find X when Y is equal to negative 5. Okay, so... Um, when y is 40, plug that in, x is 16. All right, so what that is, is they gave us our first scenario and enough information to help us figure out what that constant is. So I'm just going to make this 40 over 1 because that's an equivalent expression. And what that now gives me is a proportion, a fraction equal to a fraction. So now I can cross multiply to help me solve. 40 times 16 is going to be equal to K times 1. So 40 times 16 is 640, and K times 1 is K. So now, in any scenario that I come up with for Y and X, the K value is going to be 640. So I'm just going to use that, and now I went from three variables down to just two variables. All right, the second scenario that they want us to find is Find X when Y is negative 5. Okay, so using a different color here. When Y is negative 5, I want to find X. So notice that I plugged in for Y and K because I knew those values. And again, I'm going to do the same thing where I make it a proportion. And I'm going to cross multiply. And then I'll solve for X. Negative 5X is equal to 640. Then you just divide both sides by negative 5, and you get x is equal to negative 128. And you could just double check that your answer is correct. Again, as y decreased to negative 5, my x value got more negative. All right? So it's a little bit tricky with negative numbers there, but um, hopefully we, got, we painted a pretty good picture for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a real-world scenario here, and we're going to follow along. All right, here we go. So let's go try out something like number 27 down here. And this is where we're ultimately heading. So you can see what our answer is supposed to be, and then we'll go see if we can get that again. All right, so in this case, in number 27... It says the volume V of gas varies inversely to the pressure P. So that's why, so instead of Y and X, I've got V and P for 
volume and pressure. All right, the volume of a gas is 200 centimeters cubed under pressure of 32. So the scenario that they start us with is 200 is equal to K over 32. So the volume is 200 when the pressure is 32 or the pressure is 32 when the volume is 200. All right, so that gives us enough to solve for the constant for all these scenarios here. Cross multiply, you get 6400 is equal to K. All right, so now everywhere I see a K, I can put 6400. So then the second scenario that they, that they want us to find is when the volume or what will be its volume under pressure of 40 kilo, uh, kilograms per centimeter squared. So I want to know what's the pressure going to be, or sorry, what's the volume going to be when the pressure is um, increased to 40. So what we should expect to happen is that the volume should decrease here. So if I'm increasing the pressure, the, the volume should decrease because that's the inverse variation. All right, so just solving this really quickly, 6,400 divided by 40 in my calculator and I get 160 and that would be centimeters cubed to match my units. And you can see that as the pressure increased from 32 to 40, my volume decreased from 200 to 160. That's inverse variation. Use that same model every time. Make sure whatever the two variables are that they're diagonal of each other. If you switched P and V in this problem, you would have still gotten the same answer.